this is the Kick Aspirational Podcast. I'm Dave Vanderveen, and today we have John Wayne Freeman, who is an insanely popular surf media celebrity rising star, and uh, he hosts the Ultra Course Surf Hour on uh, on Surfer Magazine's YouTube channel. Uh, you've got an incredibly dynamic Instagram feed, John, and uh, I think you're going to have your own Netflix series soon. I'm not entirely sure. But obviously, you wanted to wait until you aged beautifully before you started this whole thing. So how did all this magic happen? You just, you know, you got to be really patient. And I was just, I'm a slow burn, a slow brew. You take 40 years and you wait. I was like, I got to wait till I'm almost 40, middle age, and then strike while it's hot. So I'm a very <laughs> patient man, Dave. You know, we have a one of my buddies in town, uh, Call him Sly Dog. He talks about slow roasting. I think that's the epitome of what we'd call a slow roast. That's uh, sometimes where, it's where all the great juices really combine. Sly um, Dog's one of my inspirations, by the way. The greatest Surfer Magazine article <laughs> was about him and Frog. It's called Dharma Bums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it made me want to leave everything, go to Chile, and chase Chilean women and surf left point breaks. <laughs> He's the man. Yeah, I think, yeah, the, both those guys are legends here in Laguna. And uh, Chovy, I think uh, Jeff Forget shot a lot of that. Great guys from, from town here. Wow. Um, you've got a show called the, the Ultra Core Surf Hour um, that's on the Surfer YouTube page. What, uh, what sort of authority do you draw from? Like, are you a former pro and industry insider? What, what is it? Where do you get that deep knowledge from? Well, I appreciate you asking, Dave. I was actually a, uh, a pretty, pretty, pretty terrible high school surf athlete, surfing creek a lot. And then um, I competed in the NSSA college division, two contests. I was on the C team. So that's, uh, that's where I draw from. But no, to be honest with you, I'm just a huge fan. Surfing for me, I fell in, I literally fell in love with it. And I'm still in love with it. And yeah, I think just my passion for it and the joy it brings me and just the celebration of the entire culture, that's where it all comes from. I have weight, like I just said, I memorized, like it was my Bible, Surfer Magazine. So I know Sly Dog, I know Frog from just being a dork that loves surfing and studies it. So, yeah. Yeah, that sounds a lot like my game. It's a lot of, lot of, lot of days on the can reading Surfer Magazine. Um, how long have you been surfing? Where'd you come from? Where'd you start surfing? And where do you surf now? So I grew up uh, right up the canyon from you in Aliso Viejo. Uh, my parents bought a home there right when it was developing. It used to be a sheep ranch. So I grew up uh, four miles from Main Beach. Um, technically, Aliso, Aliso Viejo. But if I was feeling, feeling crazy, I'd tell people I was from Laguna. Especially, <laughs> <laughs> especially when that show came out. And I would meet girls anywhere I was. I was like, I'm from Laguna. Because, you know, we didn't know. But, um, yeah, I played all the traditional sports. My dad really did not want me to become a surfer because they were all hippies and dirtbags. He was a cop in Costa Mesa for 30 years. And um, my sister always dated surfers. She loved surfing and was infatuated with it. And I'd watch all the movies, Endless Summer, North Shore. Big Wednesday. And then Big Wednesday, yeah. When I was 13 or 14, I saw Endless Summer 2 in the theater in Dana Point, um, and I'm like, I gotta be a surfer. Pat O'Connell, I was like, I wanna be, those guys, him and Wingnut were so happy and so stoked, and they're traveling the world, so I just started surfing, didn't know what I was doing, would take the bus to San Clemente, total dork, with a shortboard, started on a shortboard, and uh, quit football, quit baseball, and never looked back. And Got to the sports, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, do you, is it tough now? I mean, when you go out to surf, do you have a lot of fans, you know, high-fiving you everywhere you go? How do you, how do you deal with celebrity in the lineup? So it's really strange, right? I'm sure you know this, Dave, like, like celebrity has changed. Like it really has. And it's crazy. You can put out your content and like, I'll have, like I was walking my dog the other day and a 12 year old girl on a bicycle rode by and goes, Jonathan Wayne Freeman. And I'm like, <laughs> for me, I love that. I'm like words of affirmation. It makes me so happy and joyful. Um, but yeah, the first time, like right after Kook of the Day, the first video he posted, I was going to surf trails and this dude goes, I love you. And I literally ran up to him and said, bro, I've been waiting my entire life 
for somebody to recognize me like, <laughs> like this. High five, give me a hug, bring it in. It made me so joyful. And it, it yeah, I, I, I'd be lying if I said it's not the coolest thing ever. If, any, if someone appreciates you, how can that not be wonderful? It makes me happy. Yeah, yeah it's just giving you love, right? Pat yeah. Parnell was asking if you were kook friendly and what might that mean? I, by the way, Pat Parnell, he, he's an incredible dude as far as on the mic talking when it comes to surfing and I'm sure anything else he puts his mind to. But um, kook friendly means I was a beginner once. You were a beginner once. Um, this is, I'm new to the podcasting thing, like talking to you. I'm new to Zoom. So I remember how stoked I was and how scared I was as a beginner surfer. And if I see somebody who's in the same boat, you're sympathetic to it. You have empathy and you go, dude, this is the best. I remember being 14 and just like terrified to surf Salt Creek. So scared. And if somebody gave me a smile like Pat O'Connell, I was good for a year. Dude. <laughs> he said hello to me. I was like, oh. The star of Endless Summer 2 said hello. And he was always friendly. He was one of those guys that was just like a genuine dude. And then there were other people that were like, beat it, kook, and that were mean to me. And so now as you get better at something, you know, we all, we're all at different places. Like, I don't know crap about business. You're a businessman. Like, I would be a kook in the business world because I have nothing to tell you about it. You know, so you got to just remember where you came from. That's all kook friendly. I would be a kook in the paramedic world. Um, you, you actually just did a video about um, lineup etiquette that was really entertaining and, and helpful, I think. Um, you talked about sort of about the journey of a surfer, um, the rules around surfing. Who wrote the rules? Where do we find them? Is there a book? People have tried to make books. It used to be that the people where you learned, you got corrected <laughs> from the people that were better than you. Um, and over time with, with surf schools and things like that, I think maybe that got lost. Also with it, a lot of lawyers and, and it kind of being the way our culture is. But um, no, it's unwritten. But like with any skill or anything you do, the rules are in place to keep people from getting hurt. Um, so yeah, that was just kind of a, a funny video about what you see. And again, it's, it's, it's up to us who've been doing the sport for a while to, to share it with other people like, hey, here's the rules and this is why they are the way they are. So people don't get hurt and so that we all can enjoy the activity together, right? We surf together, right? Yeah. And I noticed too, like on, on Instagram, you're pretty, you're really active on Instagram. It's a lot of fun to watch. Um, oh boy. And, <laughs> and you were on Instagram live the other night and yeah. um, my wife and I were, I, I like to follow you. My wife and I, you know, were on your feed for briefly. Um, and then another, a friend of mine randomly recorded it. He was watching you too and totally disconnected. Um, but I noticed when I was watching the recording, I didn't see it when we were talking that um, I must have pissed some people off or that said something wrong or, you know, some people got a little eggy. Um, one, do you know what we did wrong? Or um, in two, uh, how do you manage trolls? So, you know, it could have been anything, man. I think... Um... It's weird. I always look at it like junior high because that's how it feels to me. It's all people behind screens that are talking behind their backs and they know this person and they know that person. Before I got involved in this, I was a fan of the surf industry and you hear all these rumors about different people. Then you meet them in person, you talk to them, you make eye contact and I find out a lot of these things aren't true. Um, so with trolls and all of that, I just, I personally literally would not take the time to write negative things about people because I think it's, I keep those things to myself. I don't want to waste the energy, right? I'm not always perfect about it, but um, managing trolls, I'm, I'm learning how. Like this morning, my wife was reading me negative comments that people wrote <laughs> and I just laugh, you know, like, like any time that I hear that stuff at first, it really bothered me. But then I'm like, dude, you ain't for everybody. I'm not for everybody. I like some music. I hate some music. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm figuring out my voice in real time right. while I'm doing all of this. So what that will become, I don't know. This is just who I am right now. And it's cool that you have an opinion. I'm like, the fact that you wrote something to me is pretty cool. But I will tell you this. I've met a couple of those trolls in the water. And to a person, guess what? 
they they don't say anything in person. Right. I've seen them. I look, recognize them, and they paddle away. That's they don't funny. say anything. And if somebody did say something to me in person, I would high five them and go, thank God. Like, we can talk in person. We don't need to do it behind computer screens. Right. Yeah, I, I used to write a column in Laguna for, for many years. And um, it, was, it was intentionally a little controversial. Uh, we wanted to keep skateboarding legal. It was usually there were, there were causes that I was writing columns around and things were activating around it. But, you know, it became like a little bit of a, um, in town sometimes people would say to me, uh, you know, I, I read your column, but I don't always agree with it. And I was like, I hope you know. Like, I don't always agree with my column. I think the idea is that we wrestle with these ideas as a community, right? That's that's part of the, the health of it. Um, and, and I also think like when people troll you, you know, they're really telling you about themselves. It's unclear how much they're telling you about you, right? Um, so I, it, that's really helpful. I, I appreciate that. It's, um, uh, I'm always curious, kind of like, I, I also think you're a comedian, so you kind of attract hecklers, right? That's just part of the deal. Is yeah, and that? you know what? What's what's cool about is if you say you're a comedian, you can always go, unless you're just doing something that you shouldn't have done because it's a, really offensive, <laughs> you can always go, well, you know, this is a character and this is a role. You know what I mean? There's a lot of room within comedy and there's sarcasm and there's all these different things you can do, which is rad. But um, a lot of people do not have a sense of humor. Um, they do not understand like where you're coming from. And I constantly say, dude, 99.5% of the stuff is just, it's silly. I didn't think it through. Please, this is just, it's for you to process however you want. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Like it, some people are really upset. A lot of times I'll go down the rabbit hole and I'll follow who the person is. And usually... <laughs> they either I can't find who they are there's nobody following them and they're just on there trolling or there's somebody who's an artist that has a very that wants to have a following and you're yeah. kind of like well why don't we help each other it's so it's just human to, beings yeah they're trying Weird. to attract a following by criticizing you maybe Weird. um <laughs> that's really <laughs> awesome. the uh I, I found too if you're sometimes when you reach out to people who are really kind of aggressive and you know, you ask them if they're doing okay and, you know, what's happening. They kind of open up and you find out they probably didn't, maybe didn't know. Absolutely. No, I've done that too, where they go, oh, they'll say, no, I didn't mean that. I like what you do. And you go, well, why are you right? And they're like, <laughs> Wait. I don't know. I just, you know, and so I, I just, I feel a hundred percent. Like if we were all in a room together talking and this is so much, this is with text. This is with all this stuff we're learning how to use. If it was in person, everybody would be so different. So Otherwise, we'd all get arrested and thrown in jail. You know? <laughs> um, when we were doing this Instagram Live, you were at home. And from what I picked up from your feed and from other things, you've got a wife, kids, um, you're, and you have a job. You're a paramedic. Is, is that correct? That's correct. Yep. Do all those things. How old are your kids? Uh, seven and five. And how long have you been married? 11 years. Do your kids surf? Not yet. We're, uh, I grew up around all the like South Orange County. He's going to be a pro. Push him in, push him, start him early. And I'm going the other direction. Like they play piano. They're doing that stuff. They're a little scared of the water. I've seen a lot of kids that got pushed in young. They got into overhead waves quick, got scared, and then they don't surf till they're 14. So um, if they get into it, they get into it and we'll take it from there. You know, you know one little plug, I think Sly Dog Surf Camp is one of the best ways to introduce kids to the ocean. They, uh, they always have a good time. Unclear how good it they for years, years and years. He's yeah. got it dialed. I've seen him down there. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of fun. Do you, uh, how do you manage this kind of the family work, surf, celebrity lifestyle? Um, right now I'm just stoked to be working. I'm seriously feeling bad for, uh, a lot of people that aren't being able to get into work, but I knew if I had a license of some sort, like if you're a mechanic, you can always work on cars. If you have a paramedic license, people always need healthcare workers. Um, so I'm stoked to go to that. Uh, again, it's like a firefighter schedule. So 10 days a month I work, 24 hour shifts. So that leaves me all this other time to do this. If I didn't have that work schedule, I wouldn't have been able to do all the Instagram stuff and be talking to you. It leaves a lot of time to manage family. And I, I set it up that way a long time ago. I went, that's the schedule I want. 
so I could do what I wanted in my free time. And it looks like you've been doing this since college. I noticed you, uh, you had some college videos recently and some of the downtime yeah. we've all had. Uh, uh, you were in one where you were share apparently, and it, did it cause quite a stir at the conservative Christian college you went to? It certainly did. I, uh, I got in big, big trouble for illegal pelvic thrusts, my dance moves. Yeah, it was like it was like Elvis on the Ed Sullivan show, or was that his name? Back in like only 1959. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Only for, except it was uh, the year 1999 at uh, the private Christian school I went to. But yeah, I did. I did. I was throwing some uh, some illegal body movements around there. I was thrown out of a out of a better Christian college. Which school did you go to? I went to Point Loma Nazarene University. Ooh. That's that. Okay. If I had known about that school when I was in high school, I would have gone, I probably would have gone there or Westmont or something, but I think Point Loma probably has the best winter surf in the Absolutely. United States. Is that right? Did you go to Wheaton? I, I did for three years. Then did they my told research, me I was too Dave. Good. <laughs> don't, don't. I'm going to come at you, bro. I did my, I dig, I dug deep down. I know what's <laughs> going on. And that's, that's no joke, the school you went to. That's like. They're both strict. really good. I think, I think Point Loma is really good too, but yeah. The, uh, Apparently they're they're a little stricter at Wheaton. <laughs> but dude, that's that school has is a very strict school. And you know what? And, and to be fair, like uh, they're there for a reason. You know what you're getting into when you go to that school. It's just you know when you're 19, that frontal cortex isn't fully developed. Yeah. And you like to have fun. You know your judgment, which I wouldn't change anything. I had a great time. Yeah. So you did graduate. What 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 did you actually study at Point Loma? I studied history for two years, but yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't graduate. I literally mm -hmm. surfed, ate pizza, and went to Tijuana. That's what I did. How many days a week were you surfing when you were at Point Loma? Every day. Every, Every day. day. Yeah, Every you're day. right there. You're at Sunset Cliffs. Every it's day. like epic in the winter. Yep. So fun. Um, do you still, do you, you still live in San Diego County, right? I do. We moved from, uh, I lived in San Clemente the first two years I was married at the bottom of the market. Um, Obviously, we wanted to live by the ocean. One of the affordable towns was Oceanside. So in 2009, uh, we bought a house down here, a short sale. I think great surf. Great surf. Great, there. great surf. Consistent. Yeah. You know, I was doing a little background research on you, and um, I discovered via Dave Sager, the guy that recorded our, our first interview on your face, on your Instagram feed, um, that you had a previous life as a camp counselor at Forest Home. Is that true? Yes. Yes. Who's, yes. uh, who's Johnny Andrew and why is a Puerto Rican living in Solvang? <laughs> Johnny, Johnny and his wife at the time were my bosses at, at um, Forest Home. And I grew up watching all those camp movies like Meatballs and all that stuff, Bill Murray. And I always wanted to work at a summer camp. And I ended up working at the high school camp. And I also worked a summer at the junior high camp. And it was the best experience in the world, man. Johnny was my boss, uh, him and his wife, and they were so open and so awesome. It's funny you mentioned that because you interviewed a dude whose videos we would watch all summer. Um, who's the guy that surfs that used to be a pastor, but then he got in with Oprah? And, oh, Rob Bell. Yeah, Rob Bell. So yeah, he's a good friend. When of I worked from, from in Wheaton. 2004, it was like the Rob Bell summer. Like Numa. You're watching Numa. Numa. Like that. Yeah. Numa. They would play Numa videos and 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 people would flip. Like <laughs> people that came in from other churches would be like, Rob Bell is the devil. And then then Johnny's wife would be like, No, no, this is good. And yeah, so he was the guy that summer. But um, yeah, he Johnny is my he's an outstanding Puerto Rican man and uh, got nothing but good things to say about him. He's up there living in the central coast. Yeah. yeah, Solvang or something. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, what sort of faith and beliefs do you have today? Has it changed much since then? You know, it. Uh, I grew up. I grew up very conservative in Assembly of God. My parents wow. went to Vanguard, and um, yeah, my parents are just the best. I can't. I can't say anything bad about them. Um, but a few years back, I, I had an incident where. I called the pastor of this church we've been attending for five years, a, a big, big, big church, mega church. And I, I asked the secretary, hey, how much does the pastor get paid? And she wouldn't tell me. And then the head pastor called me, chastised me, 
were calling and asking what he made, wouldn't tell me what he made. And I said, but don't we pay public? your salary? Yeah, this should be public. And, uh, this should be in the, in the, in the, right. the church financial statement. Sure. And then he asked me, he goes, I show no record of you. I go, that's because I didn't give you my bank statement. We tithe in cash. I'm like, I've been in a small group. I've done all this. So that happened. And then uh, that just kind of, I went, oh, this is, in a lot of ways, this is a business and I'm sure people are being fed and they're doing good stuff in the community. But um, I stepped back. I haven't gone to church in, in probably like four years. But as far as my faith, like, I would say now I, I would look at things the way like a Thomas Jefferson looks, looks at the world. I think God gave us um, a brain in order, in order to be rational and to use it. And when something doesn't work, I go, okay, let's, let's use common sense. And if someone's saying God told me this, I instantly go, did he? You know what I mean? Like that's, that's where I'm at. There's, I could talk about this all day. I'm not going to, but that was like a few years back. In fact, that's why I started doing all the Instagram. It's when I like went, this is who I am. Like, I'm just going to be myself and not care. Cause my, I won't say, but people used to call me when I would make videos from the church and be like, what are you doing? And I would be like, ah, and then I would take it down. <laughs> For real. No, no, I get it. It's, it's, well, it's, yeah. there's like a lot of reactive tissue in there, right? And when you've especially been raised in it, even if you had a healthy upbringing, when you get abused by it, it just starts to kick off all these questions, which I think are really normal and natural. But it's, sometimes it's, it bur it's ingrained into me. It's burned to me, into me when you're raised this way. And they were, they're good things. There's good values. There's all sorts of stuff. But at some point, and I don't think this is wrong, God gave you a mind. You need to think for yourself and figure out what is what is correct, what is not. And I just think there's a lot of room in certain circles for people to be easily manipulated. And I don't dig that. I don't think that's cool. Do you do you watch any of the Pete Holmes uh, stand up or any of his television shows? I, I watched his entire series and he's such a trip because I know that guy, even though I don't know him. I'm yeah. like, I know who that dude is. I, I, he is a youth group kid, like talented, funny, and I watch him. And then it's like, now he's unleashed. You're like, oh, there was like a, there's a genius mind in there that just went off to the races. Yeah. I, I, he's a talented man. I'm, I'm interviewing him on Tuesday. He's a good friend, but you know, I think a lot of things you're saying are things that, you know, he went through similar to you. Um, Rob certainly went through in a different way. I've, I've gone through it. I think a lot of people have gone through that path and there seems to be a, be a bigger and bigger community of people who are coming out on the other side, feeling pretty healthy, <laughs> not hating where they came from, like being grateful for where we came from, but also saying, yeah, maybe that's not the, the flavor I'm going to, I'm going to eat the rest of my life. <laughs> my, my whole thing is like, I started feeling this feeling of like, why am I feeling ashamed for questioning? Right. Like, I'm like, why am like, where is that coming from? This is a very odd feeling. I shouldn't be feeling guilty for just asking questions. So then that sort of opened everything. Um, but again, when you speak this way to certain people, they're going to, they're going to be, I don't know if they're worried for your soul or if they're worried that you're going to like lead people away. I'm not trying to do that. There there's just, I'm just sharing with you what I went through and my own thought process. Yeah. No, I think those are good thoughts. And there's a lot of, that, that's a big, dis I just did a podcast with a, a young couple, uh, Micah and uh, Keely Suda, who have this podcast called Backsliders. And they have a really killer new show out called Backsliders that's going to Tribeca. But, um, you know, it was a lot of the same conversation about, you know, when you kind of strip that away, the inherited beliefs and the, the kind of the structures that other people build for you, what's really, you know, what's really behind it all. And we, I, I, I like Peter Rollins too, who's a friend of Rob's. He's a, he's a deconstructionist kind of philosopher. Um, he, he talks about, you know, we have to pull, rip these kind of structures away to get to the real thing. It's almost like every time if you subscribe to the Jesus stuff, you know, the every time he's with his disciples, it's like <laughs> he keeps like slapping. He's like, guys, you're getting it wrong. You're, not, you're missing the point, right? 
So it's not surprising that we do that too, but it's kind of like you have to keep stripping away all these, these, you know, these, these structures that people build around the truth to get to the truth. I, I noticed that you had said in one of your interviews, I think it was with Surfer, you said that surfing is the source. What does that mean? That's from Point Break. <laughs> <laughs> you are the new Bodhi. Yay! So, so <laughs> when Keanu Reeves wants to learn how to surf, he goes to a surf shop that's on Santa Monica Pier. And there's a young kid working in the surf shop. And he says to him, he goes, surfing's a source. And Keanu's like, what? And then he gives, a, gives him the board. And what, what that means to me is that it's a healthy, awesome pursuit that has opened all these doors. Like, I've lived where I've lived because of surfing. I went to college where I lived because of surfing. I've met the people I've met because of surfing. I'm talking to you because of surfing. I married my wife because of surfing. My kids exist because of it. It's just something that, yeah, exactly. That has been, um, it changed my life. So it's a source for me. Maybe it's rock climbing for that guy or, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Can you trust people that don't have surfing at the source? Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, you should mistrust surfers because there's a lot of kooky, bizarre, weird stuff that gets mixed in. But the bottom line is I've done a lot of things physically with my body, but there's something about standing up on a wave that this sounds cheesy, but it's the truth that is different than everything else. It is very, very unique and it does something to you chemically. The dopamine release is like, very real and i'm not joking when i say these people are like drug addicts that can't surf right now like it really brings a damper on you sounds stupid if you yeah. don't surf. trust me yeah you know yeah and that's why i live here i live in a horribly expensive place because i have to get in the ocean every day right i mean i think um let me ask you this i mean i don't know if you want to answer it are you still surfing yeah up till two days ago Yesterday was the first day I haven't surfed, so it's been a, it's been a rough 24 hours. Yeah, in there. I surfed yeah. yesterday and I got on it a little late, so it was pretty beat up. And uh, I was trading some photos with a couple of friends. Um, I went out at Creek, which is still open, so I didn't break any laws. And uh, and I am very careful about not sitting too close to people or being too close to anyone. I don't surf the point right now, typically, but the. Um, Oh, you know, I look good today. I looked at it on the camera. It's, it's pumping, week. right? It's pumping. So I was out there yesterday and it was, you know, it's kind of bumpy and kind of victory at sea like, and uh, still had a great time. I didn't even have a big window to do it. And um, I was sh sh sharing some photos with people and I was saying, you know, yeah, it's kind of bumpy and chunky, but it's, you know, there's, there's swell in the water and you know, it's fun in a victory at sea sort of way. I mean, do you, do you go out in all conditions or are you, are you a little snobby about when, when and where you go out? Not at all. Um, I, I kind of go out in anything and everything. It's weird though. When you do live by the coast, you get spoiled yeah. and you can be kind of, if you're close within walking distance or a short drive, you don't go quite as like when you lived inland and you went no matter what. But um, no, I've had fun, insane sessions in big stormy surf because there was me or one other person out. Yeah. And then I've had miserable sessions in perfect surf because the crowd was terrible. Yeah, I grew up surfing in, in the Great Lakes a lot, and which is some of the worst conditions you'll ever surf in. And I think if you can find Stoke there, you can find it pretty much anywhere. So I feel really spoiled here in Southern California. And, and, and freezing. People that grow up in that cold water are durable, like yeah. way different type of people. Yeah. Well, and then I lived, we surfed in, I lived in Northern California for about eight years and surfed north of the bridge, the San Francisco Bridge. So nice. again, cold water but my, one of my ears is almost closed <laughs> yeah mine's pretty i had this one operated on and then two days ago when i surfed right the day before they closed the uh, trestles area i smashed pretty hard and it's stuck in there and i'm like dude why didn't wow. i have your ears in? were you doing just was it a big air what, what were you doing it was a massive full rotation just completely out the back if we had had the shot i mean grabbed yeah, but didn't complete it. Thank you for asking. No, th but so speaking of that, how did you get connected with Surfer and how'd they pick up? How'd you guys decide to do that YouTube show? It's, it's epic. Yeah, Peter Terrace um, is the director of digital media. And I knew Peter just from, again, reading all these magazines, Trans World, Surfer, Surfing. And um, he just followed the Instagram feed and started DMing me. Anything that I've, that has happened has just been from relationships, right? Like, 
I always thought things were complicated and I didn't understand how things worked. And then I realized, oh, you just talk to other people and create a relationship. So that's what happened. He's a dad. Uh, he's a couple of years older than me. And again, he was a guy, I've met a bunch of guys like this that were like, dude, I kind of wanted to do what you were doing, but I didn't know how to do it. And then he was like, let's make something together. And I'm like, with Surfer? No brainer. Yeah, for sure. Is, is Surfer the Bible of the sport? I think so. It has been for me. I do though. If I look over here, <laughs> wait, am I allowed? Is that blasphemy? I don't know if I can say that. There's a surfer's journal, which I love too. The surfer's yeah. journal. I keep like, I keep them we, pristine. Like we, we can't throw things. those away for some reason. <laughs> right? I, I don't throw that. surfers away. Historically, I haven't thrown surfers away um, either, but the surfer's journal, man, that is like solid gold. I don't know. There's something about that thick. Uh, texture yeah i've seen steve pesman at trader joe's before and i wanted to talk to him and i'm afraid to talk to him that's how geek <laughs> that's how geeked out i am i'm sure he'd be like oh cool thank you but i'm like <gasps> oh he'd be so stoked he'd be so stoked <laughs> oh my gosh um so gabe sullivan gave me some curious questions some curious, curious gabe gabe. questions for you mm -hmm. uh, so here's a, here's the first one shopping at costco for eight hours in a 4-3 wetsuit or surfing every day for a week with fins backwards and wetsuit backwards and leash around your neck? Oh, surfing. Surfing. I can't. <laughs> surfing. Costco's terrible. Costco's a hellhole. Good if answer. I'm there for 30 minutes, I freak out. The people with their carts are so aggressive and so gnarly and it just drives me insane. Then the lines... No, absolutely. I'd be in the water trying to figure out how to use those backwards fins, like the leash. Let's do it. Surf, surf, surf. Throw me in. Come on, Gabe. Awesome. You knew that. <laughs> that, that, was a, that, was, that was a softball question. Here's a tough one. <laughs> if you were to hypothetically sneak into lowers, what would your strategy be? Nighttime, full moon. That's Sager, it. Sager was sending me photos last night of uppers under the phone. <laughs> you could totally see it breaking on the cameras. Yeah, you, dude. You I mean, if somebody wants to come get you, why? I've said too much. What? If, why are we at? Come on. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> while we're on this, while we're on this, Gabe didn't ask this, but you just did an interview with two guys who snuck in there yesterday, right? Yeah. <laughs> the raft. Tell me. Tell us about that. What? What happened? So I. Okay, this is crazy. Again, <laughs> the social media world, I have been talking to these guys as long as I've been doing this without knowing these were the people. I turned on Surfline and I see in lowers, I see a, a skiff <laughs> like upside down and I see the lifeguards running back and forth, freaking out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is insane. So I just started talking about it. And then um, I somebody goes, requests to like talk to me live on Instagram. I press it and he's like dude that was me and I'm like it was you and we just start talking and I go can I interview you tonight and he goes absolutely I go do, do you understand what you're saying like you're going to show your face do you want to wear a mask and he's like no I, I made a mistake I'm owning it and I go you're not in jail he goes I'm not in jail I go wait I so what happens get... so do they get arrested do they get tickets so they launch from Dana Point Harbor yeah and their plan was just like we'll surf a bunch of different spots so they Anchored at lowers, they were gonna get out, catch a couple of waves, get back in. But a big set came, he wasn't far enough out, it pulled the anchor up, boat flips, starts coming in, lifeguards are there yelling at him. They come in, they were super, super respectful with law enforcement. It was the first day of the ban. They thought that they could go past, out, come from the water and still surf. Like they weren't gonna be violating, breaking any laws. Being respectful, being kind, he lost the boat, he had it covered with insurance, and they didn't get a ticket, but he lost all the stuff that was in the boat, his phone, their wallets, their keys to their cars, and Whoa. I guess, the, I think the tow boat company towed him back to Dana Point. Whoa, well, that's a, that's a pretty heavy story. Your, your, <laughs> your, your original preview on it was, I saw that, where you're saying, these guys, they can't paddle out, they don't, they right. don't anchor a boat. Um, and then I was looking for the live video and I couldn't find it, the live interview, but that was, that was, I think everyone was talking about that yesterday. That was like one of the highlights of the first day. of yeah. the Yeah. And tonight, tonight I'm interviewing the co-pilot. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Are they both, are they, you had said they're, they're Creek guys. Are they pretty good surfers? They are. They're good surfers. I mean, like 
the interview's still on there. When we're done, you can just go to my story and press live. You'll see it. And then I'll yeah. post it later. He said okay. it was okay. Um, his whole thing is like, I'm a man. I made a mistake. I'm going to own it, which I can respect. It's just this wonderful entertainment. I'll tell you that. Dude, they, they, I mean, we should all be paying them something for creating <laughs> such amazing entertainment on the first band day. That was amazing. Yeah. Okay, we're, we're back to Gabe's questions here. As a paramedic on the front lines, what are your thoughts and observations on the COVID pandemic? Does it warrant a shutdown? Is it overkill? Do surf spots fuel the spread? So, um, first off, I'll say like everybody was unaware of what to do. There was miscommunication amongst all the hospitals. I'd go to different ones and everyone was kind of figuring it out. Um, nobody really knew what was going on. And I think even right now, people are still just sort of trying to figure it out. All the people I've seen that are getting intubated, meaning they're having a tube put in their throat and breathing for them, have either been elderly people, uh, people with hypertension or diabetes, or people that had an underlying health issue that they were unaware of. So they thought they were he healthy, but they weren't. Uh, they had some underlying cardiac condition, they got COVID and now maybe they're in intensive care. That's what I've seen. Um, everyone now, like in the beginning, nobody was wearing the masks really, unless someone was suspected. Now everyone's wearing them. You go into an emergency room and it looks like they're keeping ET, the extraterrestrial in there. They have stuff blocked it's off. Masks, yeah. Everybody's gowned up. Every single place I enter, they scan my forehead to get my temperature. I have to ask, answer a bunch of questions, like have you traveled? Have you been exposed? Um, I feel stupid because early on I, I posted some videos saying, Hey, I didn't know anybody that died from swine flu that, um, that, that died from Ebola. Um, and I kind of, I was, I'm like, I still don't know anybody personally, but I know friends who know people that have got sick. Um, so my, my whole experience with that, that's what it's been. And then as far as surfing goes, um, when the lady came out in San Diego and said, like, oh, if you surf, it spreads across the water. Right. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, something's yeah. not right with that. Then I found out last night, like, what she said, she saying was taken out of context. I don't know if you saw that. It was, it was, she was talking about wind, right? Not about water spreading it? Correct. She was just saying something about the foam and the way waves break. Like, COVID could be trapped in it. And if you surf, you're putting your life at risk. You could you could get it easier, which sounded kind of weird to me. Um, she, she had said she wouldn't get in the water for a million dollars. And I was thinking, I'll take a million dollars every day to get in the water. Yeah, right I'm, I'm going to jump right in there. I'm good. <laughs> but I think yeah. it is good to be careful, like you're saying, and, and you know, still practice the social distancing. How, how far apart were you staying from people when you were surfing? I was surfing. See, that's the thing, dude. I wasn't going to lowers. Um, I was staying. I was going with one other person or by myself at out of, way spot, out of the way spots that aren't yeah. great places, but I'm still surfing by myself. So if I was next to somebody, dude, I'm 20 feet. Like, yeah. And then people started coming at me saying, you're, you're setting a bad example. And I was just like, well, am I? I mean, you don't really have all the information, but go ahead and shame me and judge me. People love to do that. And I understand if you're sitting at home and you're freaked out, but I'm actually going out and seeing what's happening. And for me and my mental health, like getting out and going surfing by myself, um, how's that different from a person riding their bicycles or people hiking? You know, you just got to use your own common sense and judgment. We, no one really, we're all, get, we're all in this together. You know? No, I think that's really helpful. You're, you're a good role model for us all. And, um, and I think, I, I, but I think part of it is just working through it, right? Figuring it out. I mean, we, none of us knew the answers. The government certainly well, didn't. We've all been trying to figure it out as we go. Um, I mean, with my work, we started dealing with this in China back in, you know, December, January, and it's been kind of going around the world in our business. And now, now, uh, now it's here at home, um, which, you know, a lot of people didn't think was necessarily going to happen. And, and now, now here it is. Um, so next question, this is the last Curious Gabe question. Would you rather own a toilet paper factory or Kelly Slater's Wave Company Surf Ranch? First off, thank you, Curious Gabe, because this is a dream come true. I tried. I always wanted to run into you back in the day and get my picture taken. You, and I knew what you were doing. You always got the pretty girls. 
<laughs> There'd be a bunch of hot chicks in every single one. Um, anyways, I would Kelly Slater's Wave Pool Company. I don't. <laughs> dude, we've like... been taking we've been taking dookies for as long as life has been around, and no one had toilet paper. Just find a find a, a some water, and I don't know. Yeah, I want Kelly Slater's Wave Pool Company. Come on. Yeah, these are like softball questions, but you know, Gabe's yeah, a nice guy. I like he wanted, wanted to make it fun. Gabe's um, the man. Yeah, he, he has a sweet van, modeling, interviewing chicks. Solid. Killing it. Solid Killing choices, it, brother. Solid choices. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So now we're down to a speed round. First time I've done one, but are you ready for a speed round? I'm These ready. are also, binary, Gabe, binary Gabe. questions. Wait, can I say one more thing to Gabe Sullivan? Yeah, yeah. I bought Flow Hose because of you back in 1995. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to plug. I'm wearing this shirt because Jeff Booth told me we all need to, to get these, which is we should all be antisocial. Um, it's made by uh, Society, T E E, Society. But Jeff Booth, who's a local Laguna bro, is now at Flow Hose. Is it Flow Joe's or Flow Hose? Flow Hose. F L O J O S, Flow Hose. Are those mm -hmm. legal at Point Loma College, Flow Hose? Absolutely. Flow hose all day, every day. Air the toes and flow hose. Yep. All right. So we're going to do a speed round now. And um, so this, these are binary questions. You have to pick one. Um, you don't have to. You can kind of, you know, we'll, we'll wing it. But this, the idea of a speed round is you pick one. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Longboard or shortboard? Shortboard. Sand bottom or reef? Reef. Wetsuits or trunks? Trunks. Men or women? Women. Kids or adults? Kids. <laughs> Good answer. It was hard to say, but yeah, they're pretty cool most of the time. <laughs> All right. This is, a little, I'm throwing a curveball here. Single fin, twinner, or thruster? Thruster. No, that, wait. Why isn't quad in there? What are you doing? No, I want quad. Give me quad. Give me quad. Quads are not the true answer. <laughs> oh. Thruster. Can I do a twin? <laughs> Can I do a twin plus like a little trailer? Yeah, yeah, then sure. I'm saying thruster. All right, go ahead. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Bacon or sausage links? Bacon. Beer or wine? Beer. Tubes or big carvable faces? I don't know how to get tubes. <laughs> but I, That's because you're riding a twin fin. <laughs> I've never been to the, the Mantalis. The Mantalis. Mantalis. Uh, big carvy faces because I need to spend... This is actually why I'm doing all of this. I want to get enough money so that I can learn how to get tubed. This has nothing to do with oh, anything other than that. I want to become a better surfer, but I need to I want to, to help make it. that dream real. I want to, you know what? I, I really want to help make that dream come real. We, I think we need to talk about, you know, you selling out so we can make your dream real. Dave, that's actually why I'm doing this podcast and I did my research on you. I need you to tell me how to become a social media guru. All right, keep going. Go ahead. Jesus or Buddha? Jesus. Trump or Biden? <laughs> Is that my son? Is that my kid? <laughs> Sorry, I was distracted. There's something. What's the next one? What's the next one? <laughs> Surfer or slab? Surfer. Surfing or church? Surfing is my church. <laughs> Money or fame? Neither. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> that was the speed round. Great job. That was a lot of fun. Right. Nice that was work. rad. I think you won, John. That was love fantastic. It. I love it. So, so I'll kind of wrap it up here. What's your advice for surfers thinking about what to do now with all the beach and stoke closures? Don't break the law. Um, most of the people working down by the beach are, are good guys, and they probably surf too, and they got a job to do. Use common sense. Use your brain. Um, you're going to love surfing more when you get back to it. And you're going to appreciate it way more. All the small stuff we get to do, getting ready in the morning, preparing the coffee, getting our boards ready, our fins dialed, and then actually getting to the beach and surfing, it's going to be that much sweeter. This is not a big deal. Please, please just remember we are all selfish and we don't want to like the world to look at us, you know, poorly. Like just it's surfing. It's one small part of life. It's a big part of life. We love it. But this too shall pass. We will get back on it soon. And hopefully 
everyone will get along better in the water and we'll learn from it. Awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you, John Wayne Freeman, for taking the time to uh, do the Kick Aspirational podcast today. All right. uh, looking forward to hopefully continuing the conversation. This, is, this has been a ton of fun. I have questions for you, but for another time, okay. I will send them to you. I have many, many questions. And, and your wife seemed like a sweet, sweetheart, by the way. My wife is right over here. Sarah's been listening. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you again. This is Pleasure. fun. Yeah, I saw the, uh, the video you guys did of some kids. I think I know where you guys live, bombing down the hills. Oh, yeah, Bluebird. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I yeah. see, keep seeing people riding dirt bikes around here too. I'm like, you're not allowed to ride dirt bikes, but nobody cares. Yeah, right I think there's, there's new rules. This is like between the time between Christmas and New Year's where you can do whatever you want. Exactly, but, uh, there you go. Really appreciate well, Dave, it, brother. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you and I, I wish you all the best, my friend. I hope this is all over soon. This is fantastic. I'd love to, I'd love to be on your podcast when you have one. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> all right.